Hello. I'd like to do a couple of videos, one after this, on uh, light meters. Been a lot of people ask me about light meters. So right now, a simple little tool. I've got a couple of these. It's indispensable. And I really, I, I never see anybody using them. Um, what do you do for white balance in your pictures? I mean, do you just wing it, or you just like uh, you uh, find a, something that you knew was white in the picture to balance it out? Uh, what about any sort of portraiture at all? Now, we we can argue what light meters here in the next video, and uh, I'll flat out state that 95% of people don't need them, and I'll go into that in another video. But what about color balancing? You know, if you're out on the end of a pier and you see a bird in flight, I mean, you're, you're gonna do, you're gonna do, you're gonna stick a, uh, a color balance chart? No, obviously not. Uh, action shots? No. Um, do you do any weddings? Um, I, I don't know about you, but I've uh, for years heard people bitch and moan, and to me, this is about the stupidest BS imaginable. It's uh, kind of like uh, someone complaining about a squeaky door and, uh, you know, it's like, why don't you drop some oil on it? Why would anybody shoot a wedding? You know, you're supposed to be there beforehand, before the wedding. At least, hopefully, before anything starts, if preferably a day before. Or at least scope it out so you know where you're going to actually place yourself. This applies to portraiture as well as uh, landscape photography. What about color balance? What are you going to do? Are you going to do nothing? You, well, that looks good. Well, forgetting the fact of whether your monitor is balanced or not, and my, uh, my monitor has been calibrated. And it's really easy to do on one of these, by the way. Another great reason to love Mac. It's also basically why 95% of photographers, and my, I'm pretty sure it's like 95% <laughs> people that uh, you know, edit their photos using Mac. What about balancing? Here's a little color checker passport. Uh, alas, it is an expensive little tool. This little sucker is uh, 90 bucks, and I think that's on sale. And uh, you got to make sure not to touch the color swatches in there. What about a wedding? You know, um, people see things differently. You know, warm tones. I mean, is there too much cyan in the shot? Is there too much magenta? You know, what if... Let's just take this as an example. Now, here's a fact that is undeniable. You, when you're taking a wedding, uh, or when you're doing a, a uh, you know, a, a shoot, uh, you know, model, or you're being paid to take headshots, especially on location, you got full control over everything. What do you worry about white balance when you're using studio strobes? Yeah, how often are you in studio taking headshots? It might be all the time. What about doing stuff on location? You know, how are you going to balance the shots if you're going to send them off to print? If it's like, well, it looks good on my uncalibrated monitor. Or what if your monitor is calibrated? I mean, how sure are you about the color balance? Color checker passport. Most indispensable, simplex little tool imaginable. Okay, I'm going to show up at a wedding like a half an hour before it starts. I'm going to go to the wedding chapel, drop this here, step back wherever it is. I preposition myself where I know I'm going to take most of my shots. Um, I'm going to check my, uh, use my light meter, take a... Uh, uh, incident reading of where my uh, highlights are going to be if I have a bunch of light coming in through the windows, for example, whatever time the wedding is going to be. I'm going to stick it uh, in the lighting that I have, or what if I have, there's a lot of times where there's mixed lighting, tungsten, halogen, um, not always in a wedding chapel. I'm going to go to the reception area. I'm going to drop this, take a shot, boom. You've spent 10 minutes or less taking two or three shots, maybe Maybe, you know, you're going to have the wedding chapel, you have the reception room. Typically, that's it. You might have more. I mean, obviously, it depends on the wedding. Or you could spend all night pissing around in Lightroom. You, here's, like, here's the fact. When you're taking headshots on location, when you're doing a wedding, you are being paid to do the gig. And here, here's the important point that nobody seems to get. I mean, you better listen closely because it's irrefutable and undeniable. You are going to be paid the same whether you spend, uh, you know, three hours screwing around trying to balance a bunch of shots. I'm not talking about cropping or selecting all that. You know, that's something else unrelated to color balance. You are not being paid one damn dime to, to piss away extra time at night, you know, uh, color balancing and uh, checking the skin tones of your shots. You are not being paid one damn dime extra. Well, I've spent... You know, I gotta adjust my cost on your wedding because I, you know, 
I had to color balance all that freaky lighting you had on the wedding and the receptionary. And there's nobody that's paying you for that. Drop this in the chapel. Drop this in the reception area. I, by the way, I've got a link to a video below, and uh, I don't believe in uh, fixing perfection. There's another video on the x right uh, color checker passport that I believe you should watch. I used to teach archery lessons. One of the key things, actually one of the main things in archery, is absolute consistency. Knowing your anchor points when you're actually shooting, absolute consistency in uh, calibrating uh, new bow strings. All of this is applicable to photography. When you keep absolute consistency and you build, by the way, this comes with a CD, you build software profile, uh, you build a profile for the shot that you did, you can say, you know, wedding shot, you know, uh, June, whatever, and then uh, the chapel. You do that as a plug-in uh, for calibrating your shots, and you can apply it to all. You do select all the pictures in the chapel, all the pictures in the reception area. You're doing a uh, headshots on location out in the gardens or something like that, or, you know, who knows where. Under what, who knows what sort of freaky lighting, you know. Have your model, hold up this, take one shot, put it down. Take your shot. How long did that take you? It took you 30 seconds, if not less. Hold this up. Let me take a quick picture. Click. Okay. Now let's get to the shoot. You show up a half an hour early uh, to the wedding. Hopefully you scouted it out a day beforehand, at the very least. You drop this in the chapel, the reception area. You take a shot. You've immediately built a profile. There is no guessing. By the way, up here, I had this uh, upside down when I was setting it down here. Up here we have uh, uh, some cooling. And we have some warming. When it's magenta, you apply a magenta and use that as your white balance. When you choose the magenta, it's going to cause a cooling effect. It'll be the inverse of what you select. You choose this uh, cool cyan patch, it greatly warms. There are actually gradations of cyan and gradations of magenta right here in these two rows. You never want to touch this, by the way, because it'll get skin oils on it. And that will degrade this for obvious reasons. Change the color of it, too. The oils will not only cause degradation, but will cause it to, to degrade faster and actually change the color. You apply a little cyan, it's going to greatly warm up the skin tones. All you have to do is choose the level of gradation of warming right up here or cooling down here. You have your 18% gray here. And on the other side, we have a neutral white. I got a second one of these because it's so useful. I keep one here and I keep one in, well actually I keep both in a bag. You know, just drop this in a shot. You're going to do some landscape photography? Drop it. When you're in Lightroom, sorry I had it upside down again. When you're in Lightroom, you know, click. White balance. How hard is that? How much time do you spend pissing away at night? Uh, if you're on a shoot, if you've done a wedding shoot, you've done uh, headshots on location, that you've wasted time that you're not getting paid for. Take one shot of this, fold it up, put it back in your bag, and start taking your, you know, start doing your photography. There's no guesswork after it. Absolute consistency. The same thing applies to archery lessons and the shooting lessons that I used to, used to give. Absolute repeatable consistency. You change lenses. A lens has a different color profile. Oh, this is undeniable. Anybody will tell you, like, one lens has a slight cyan cast, another lens has a slight magenta, or, you know, you know, there's, the guesswork is gone. The skin tone, you know, I think she looks, it's like, no, you know, uh, here's the color checker passport. I did a white balance check in the Lightroom. That's exactly what her skin tones look like. When you send it off to print, the only thing that you should be worried about in Lightroom is once you apply the profile off your, your, uh, your X-Rite color checker passport, is you apply it all to the exact same lighting scenarios or location. And then you're done. All you have to worry about then is, you know, cropping, you know, uh, adding a, a little bit of saturation and uh, sharpening uh, on your sliders, and then you're done. Why piss away that time at night, you know, trying to color correct stuff? Just buy one of these. Keep things simple. Simplicity is divinity. You know, if you thought you could make one of these, well, you really can't. <laughs> anyway, it's an extra right color checker. Check the link below. And uh, I think you should watch that. The YouTube video is another YouTube video by a professional photographer, and uh, he goes into basically the same things that I said. Um, but he gives you a little bit more in-depth uh, explanation as far as uh, creating your profile. 
in Lightroom, and it's no more uh, difference, uh, no more uh, time consuming than you hit File, Apply Profile. You have to restart Lightroom, and then you're done. You apply that to all your pictures under the same lighting situations. Okay? Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, this little sucker um, is 90 bucks. It's on sale now. Actually, it used to be 100 but I think it's always been roughly about 89 to to $100. So, there it is. Thanks for watching. Save yourself time. You know, why waste time? Concentrate on the photography. It's like, well, this is just another goofy tool. Do I really need it? Um, if you're shooting for uh, gits and shiggles, uh, you really still kind of do I mean, if you care about the color balance of your shots. Keep it simple. You know, if you want to eyeball it, you know, you can eyeball it too. But I can tell you, no matter how good a photographer you are, you know, there's no master carpenter out there, by the way. That like, I'm gonna eyeball it. I don't need a. Uh, I don't need a. Uh, a. Uh, a tape measure anymore. I'm a master uh, carpenter. You know the same thing applies to photography. You think you can eyeball it, then you're an idiot. You know, so if I can eyeball it, yeah. You show me one master carpenter that says oh, I can eyeball it. I don't need a tape measure or a uh, bubble level anymore. Yeah, right. Okay. Thanks. Bye.